Think you know which way it's going to go? You should head on over to Sports Interaction. When the puck drops, Sports Interaction has you covered. Uh, live in play. Live in play. But pregame. Uh, pregame. Live and in player on one of their many prop bets. I wasn't ready. On all major sports and prop bets. Want to bet? Sportsinteraction.com slash STPN. 19 plus. Please pay responsibly. I'm keeping them on their toes. Uh, we could talk about the wild thing in a little bit here, but I, I do really want to talk about this. Uh, Nick Robertson is skating in grays today with uh, with Wayne Simmons, which means he will not be playing. Mm-hmm. Uh, he has played 11 games for the Leafs this year. He has now been scratched in 10. And people are starting to starting to get upset. And I think rightfully so for all the reasons we've talked about. We've done this exercise. But when you compare and contrast with Alex Kerfoot, 23 games, he's got seven points. He's played every game, right? Uh-huh. And yes, I know he's shooting 2.9% and his career average is about 13%, which yeah. is that, yeah, okay, he, he's probably good for some goals. But last year when he had about a career average year for him, he had 13. So the max that you can really hope for, for, for Alex Kerfoot from now until the end of the year, basing it on his history of the five seasons previous, is about 10 more goals. Is I it would really, kill for that. Is it really worth sitting Nick Robertson this much for potentially 10 more goals from a guy who's clearly having an off year, who's going to be a free agent, who's not coming back. What are we, what is happening here? Let's pretend Nick Robertson doesn't exist. Okay. I don't think Alex Kerfoot is the greatest use of a roster spot. He's just not, man. Um, It's the unfortunate reality that they don't exist in vacuums, these players, and that their contracts are tied to uh, with their performance, and that you can't scratch Kerfoot if you ever want to move him. Because what if you scratch yeah. Kerfoot, his career's done in Toronto. Like that's it. You're admitting that it's over here. I think so he's you, an NHL player. It's just it's not working. Yeah, but it's you have working. to you have to keep running it out and running out to try like the it. Nick Ritchie situation, right? Couldn't exactly. scratch him, but he couldn't find a spot. You know, like they still Robert, have a number of underachieving players. It's kind of wild. Yeah, like ha- they're fourth. They're fourth <laughs> in the league. The the top end of their lineup has been performing, so that's all you need. Really need, but not to their standard though. Mm-hmm. Or Matthews hasn't. But they've been winning games. So, yeah. but but with yeah. with Robertson and Kerfoot, like their their performance is also tied to their age, their NHL experience, and their contracts. All of that has to come into play here. It's not we can't NHL video game this where you play the higher right. overall who fits in the chemistry of the lineup. You know. Everything has to be in play. I part of me wonders if they're making a point with Robertson because they've also said there's value to being in the NHL and being around it. Because didn't I read somewhere that Robertson doesn't want to be sent down? I have not read that. Like I thought I saw that somewhere where, you know, oh, he needs to be getting games. And I think they might have said, Nick, we're going to get you some games. And I think he said, I should look this up before I say it into a microphone, but um, I thought I thought what I saw is he doesn't really want to go back to the Marlies. He wants to be in the NHL, hmm. and they're saying okay, but there's a price to that, mm-hmm. right? It's incredible to me that one of the most dangerous power play teams in the entire league has. It shows you how good the top unit is because the second unit has Kerfoot and Engvall. Two guys who genuinely could not hit the broadside of a barn. Do you remember when they year. moved Willie to the second unit for like two games? No, it was a punishment. Yeah. <laughs> is yeah. I I don't worry about that because okay. as an enormous Willie defender, I will acknowledge that you need to smack him around once or twice a season to he get his attention. that punishment, you think? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. He made okay. a dumb play that was beneath him, beneath mm-hmm. his skill set. Mm-hmm. And then now look. And ever since then, he's been fine. It's a non-issue okay, for me. Okay, I don't think the Leafs are pl- are putting their best players on the ice, but it's more of circumstance. I think yeah. like Nick Robertson probably should be in the lineup. Kerfoot should probably be somewhere else, but it's not that way, unfortunately. Leaf fans haven't been talking about this name enough. Timo Meyer. That's mm-hmm. that's my deadline aim. He'd be great. Well, is, the contract's a lot, right? But they it got is. room now that everybody's on LTIR. Yeah, and he's. Um, I believe expiring deal. Uh, I think one of the more underrated players in the league. Elliot and Jeff threw out Frank Vertrano as well, but they're saying knock it off. But they were saying that the Leafs couldn't do that with their contract situation, and with like, and I don't mean I don't mean money. I mean um, uh, oh fifty uh, fifty contracts uh, based on what the Ducks may have wanted. Yeah, well, I know. Did you have to sign everyone? Well, you could have said no to a couple guys. (laughs) Well. 
Timo Meyer, by the way, six million dollars left uh, for this season, and at the end of this year, Timo Meyer is an RFA. Oh, he's an RFA, which is fascinating because oh, he's only twenty six, and uh, might yeah. Be harder. So there <laughs> are the the Leafs would retain his RFA rights if they qualify him. Yeah, they wouldn't though, would but they? He shoots That'd be stupid. The no, he's amazing. Out. He's a volume shooter, and it's been going in. I I remember uh, we were making fun of me um, because he uh, I had him on my fantasy team. And he had by far the most shots in the league out of players who didn't have any goals. Ah, he had three. He got his first against the Leafs. 326 shots last year alone in 77 games. That's a lot of That's shots. A lot of and shots. What's, what's he at this year? Uh, 119 already. 119 already. And, and what's his production? Uh, 22 points, 12 goals, 10 assists, 24 games. I think that's my guy. I, well, and I think the Leafs have had a problem with not shooting. There's a lot of guys who are great at setting up. Uh, Marner, great setup, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nylander's finally starting to shoot more. He's got an unbelievable shot when it doesn't whistle past the net. Uh, and Tavares <laughs> is a in, he's an, in he's tight. a, he's an in tight player. He's a setup guy. They don't, other than Matthews don't really have that sort of threat. And I, I do want to throw this out there. We talk about Toronto's depth supposedly being its strength and it's proven to be so. But after those first four guys, the scoring falls off. You've got 12 goals from Tavares. 12 from Nylander, 10 from Matthews, and then it goes all the way down to six with Marner. And then you've got Yarncroak, Bunting, and Kampf with five, four, and three each. And, and Kampf yeah, got bad. a lot of those early. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, it just wouldn't hurt to have a guy who can also mm-hmm. to, to score, to even that out a little bit. Bunting, but like, Matthews, Willie, Meyer, Tavares, Marner. Yeah, sign me up for that shit. <laughs> Quarter of the season. That's about 15 goals from those guys. I don't yeah. mind that. Oh, I don't mind the top end. I'm, I, I'm, I just... Uh, I want a little bit more, but I'm sure that number is different if Kerfoot's scoring. I think I think the other thing is that people wonder, Robertson already has more goals this year than Kerfoot. He's played half the games. That's nuts. If you're looking for goal scoring in the top six, is there a reason why he's not playing? That They, they don't think his game is ready. They don't think his game is ready. I think when his game is on, he looks like a really dangerous player. And mm-hmm. when it's off, he looks pedestrian. And that's exactly what the Leafs are trying to smack out of their veteran players, let alone the rookies. Oh, fair enough. 